following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Sacrament of Confirmation. The Sacrament of Confirmation must be understood as a Sacrament of Initiation. This is because this uh, Sacrament should be administered during the time of adolescence where the sexual aspect of our lives related with puberty are strongly affecting us. <coughs> Since uh, confirmation is a continuation and completion of, bapt of uh, baptism or the baptismal grace. Baptism can be performed by a priest. Yet, confirmation is performed by a bishop, as we stated in previous lectures. The anointing with oil in the sacrament of confirmation symbolizes the cleansing and healing of the soul who receive the seal of the Holy Spirit by means of sexual transmutation. As a result, uh, uh, the soul is united to the Christic forces more fully. Thus, banding the soul with the superior forces of the Gnostic Church in that then the confirmed or initiated neophytes receive the power to transfer the superior forces of Christ to people. Or as the Lord Christ stated, giving all what he has to the poor. Being confirmed or initiated is a serious step with the Gnostic Church in the superior world. Remember that uh, we have stated that when we are confirmed as a young, as an uh, adolescent, as a teenager, the Bible states that this rich young man who asked Jesus what to do, he wanted to be confirmed in his faith. The Master Jesus says, you have to follow the commandments. And uh, the young uh, man asked, which one? And the Master Jesus answered explicitly, Thou shalt do not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear foul witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
His commandments, of course, are to, uh, in intimate relation <coughs> with the development of the sexual force in the time of adolescency. And this is very important because, unfortunately, uh, the young men, of course, answer unto Jesus says, all of these commandments have I kept from my youth up to that, uh, to that age. But when the third level of the testicular tissue starts to build zoosperm in puberty and when the woman starts uh, menstruating because her ovaries start producing the ovum of course the sexual forces of Venus start in, uh, affecting the physical body of uh, both sexes. And uh, we know that it occurs a drastic transformation in the mind, in the heart of uh, teenagers because of the sexual force of Venus. And this is something very important that we should study because unfortunately humanity ignores the relation of the forces of the cosmos of the solar system with the sexual development. As we have stated in previous lectures, the sacraments are always related with the three amends. And uh, at this age is where the sexual forces <coughs> start to act very strongly. And if we do not take care of the sexual forces of the physical body, then we fall into many mistakes. So it is important to study and to learn the relationship of the sexual force with our own particular divinity. The whole of this relation of the divine with the human is written in the book of Genesis. But unfortunately, as we have stated, the book of Genesis is under, uh, only understood when we know Kabbalah and alchemy. Otherwise, we interpret only stories, tales, and we fall into many misinterpretations. And we need to be initiates. And as uh, this sacrament of confirmation is really an initiation, a uh, st serious step that the soul takes in order to penetrate more into the mysteries of Da'at, which is the Gnostic Church, and uh, which, as you know, that is the tree of knowledge of good and evil, related with the forces of Yesod, which in the teen age are very strong. Related with this, it is very important to understand that in Gnosticism, when we talk about fire, we talk and refer the fire to three genii or logoi which relate to the superior hierarchy and to the cosmos. As you remember, the tree of life is related with the planets, with the stars, and uh, According to the conjugation of fire, the priest always names 
three G and EI. Conjunction of the fire is very simple. States like this. In the name of Mikael, the son, uh, the king of the, the sun, S U N, and the lightning. In the name of Anael, the prince of the astral light. And in the name of Samael, the king of volcanoes and earthquakes, uh, obey me, salamanders of fire. It's a simple invocation for the exorcism of fire. So we name here three genii. First is Mikael, which is a genie of the sun. And if you remember, the sun is related with Tiferet and with Geburah in esotericism, in Asiatic Kabbalah. Then we find the other planet, which is Venus, which is related with what we call the positive ray of Venus, Anael, the prince of the astral light. Because Anael represents the positive ray of the planet Venus. The negative uh, aspect or ray of the planet Venus is called Lilith. And this is very important here. Very important. Because Venus is related with Tiferet as well, according to Gnostic esotericism or Kabbalah. And uh, we find Samael, which is related with Geburah, which is Mars. So then we find that the three genii of fire, Samael and Geburah, Mikael and, Ge and Geburah and Tiferet, and Anael, the prince of the astral light, is in, in Tiferet as well. So we have Tiferet and Geburah, two sephiroth of the second triangle of the tree of life, which is directly related in the human organism with the soul. Because remember that we have stated in many lectures that the monad is a trio of spirits. That spirit is Hesed. Geburah, which is a divine soul, which is feminine, and Tiferet, which is a human soul, which is masculine. So here we find <coughs> that the fire is related with Geburah and Tiferet these uh, three gen genii that we name, Mikael, Anael, and Samael. And of course, remember that uh, when we refer to the physical body, we say that Tiferet is in relation with the heart. And Geburah, the feminine aspect, also is related with the heart. And both are related with fire, which is represented <coughs> with the letter Shin. Remember that in Kabbalah, we always state that the three uh, mother letters, Aleph, Shin, and Mem, are related with uh, the three uh, elements, Aleph with the air, Shin with the fire, and mem with the water. And of course, the element earth, as we always state in the previous lectures, is simply the letter nun, which is the sperm, which is the outcome of these three primary mother lectures, uh, I mean uh, letters, related with the elements. Because sometimes people say, well, what is the element earth related with the Hebrew letters? The element earth is related with nun, which is the sperm or the ovum, which is the outcome of the, these uh, mother letters, because Aleph 
is in relation, relation with the air, with the oxygen that we breathe through our nose. And that's why we said that the father is precisely in the root of the nose. And this oxygen purifies the blood, which is represented by shin, which always we refer as shamayim, the superior waters, created with uh, blood in the heart. And of course, we repeat that this shin, because in Hebrew, in order to write the word fire, you write it with two letters, shin and aleph. Aleph, which is related with the head, and shin with the heart. So together, they form the, the word shin, which is fire, in, in the Hebrew language. And of course, this shin fire, as you know, that is in the blood, because aleph and shin united, is oxygen, and the fire in the blood that eventually, when it's crystallizing, becomes mem, which contains the nun, the fire within the sexual matter. Because mem, of course, is a fluid, a sexual fluid. All of this, of course, as you know, is a transformation, as you see, as we explained in the previous uh, sacrament, of Aleph, which in this case is that letter where that when you write it, you find three lines, one in the middle and one above and one below. The three of them represent, of course, the three primary forces of the first triangle of the three amens, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That when entering into the blood becomes the fire of that, of the Gnostic Church, that we always state this fire also, the letter Shin, also has three elements, if you know the Hebrew letters, which represents also another Trimurti, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, related with uh, the heart, with the fire. Here we find, of course, the two Trimurtis that we were talking in previous lectures. The first, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Aleph. The second one, which is Shin, is Father, Mother, Son, Intifereth, which is related with the word of creation, Bria, in Kabbalah. And of course, those forces descend into Yesod, which is a sexual energy, as the end seminis, within which we find the Nun, which is the physical, chemical element within which are all those elements that we need in order to create a physical body and also the internal bodies. So, the first triangle is Aleph in the Tree of Life. The second triangle is Shin in the Tree of Life. And the third triangle is Mem in the Tree of Life. Related with the elements that we are talking here, air, fire, and water. And the earth itself, of course, is in the very bottom, Malkut, which is the letter Nun. But if you observe clearly these three letters, mother letters, Aleph, Shin, and Nun, they form a name. You see? I said a name because really it is what, is what they are forming in Hebrew. The name. There is a, a way that says in, in Kabbalistic way or in Hebrew language, Baruch Hashem. That means the sacred name. Baruch, sacred. It's another way to say sacred. But the word Aleph, Shin, Mem, Hashem is how you read it. That means the name. That's why many Kabbalists, instead of said, 
of saying Yod, He, Vav, He, which is very with the whole tree of life, they said Hashem, the name. And when they said Hashem, they are, of course, pronouncing Aleph, Shin, and Mem, the name. In synthesis, the whole tree is Hashem. And of course, the whole Hashem, the name, the word, is hidden within Nun. That's why it says that Nun is the Messiah, because it contains the three primary forces in itself. And that Nun is the sperm in the oven that starts to develop at the age of adolescence. adolescence. <coughs> at the age of puberty. And that's why it is necessary to comprehend this. What is the fire? What is a shame? The word, the name. Because as you remember, Yod, He, Vav, He is translated or explained as Yod, the Phallus, He, the Yoni or the feminine sexual organ, and then Bab, the men, and He again, the woman. That is the explanation in alchemy about Yod, He, Bab, He, which is synthesized in Hashem, the name. And we explain that the feminine and masculine polarities in the superior forces in the tree of life are in that, which is the Gnostic Church. So those two primary forces, mother and father, Abba and Aima, which is the priest and the priestess, represented in the priest of the priestess, in the church of that, the superior Eden, these two forces are represented by the letter Yod and the letter He. So Yod and He is precisely the two letters that represent Ava and Aima, father and mother. That if you remember, is one of the commandments that the Master Jesus says to the young, uh, the young uh, man. He, he stated, You shall honor thy father and thy mother. Of course, in order to honor father and mother, you had to know that all the forces of the tree of life synthesize in that, because we're explaining here that, father mother, which is in the Gnostic Church, superior forces of that, that is where they unite. And this is how, and this is why, Shin, which is fire, Aleph and Shin letters, become in Genesis, in the Hebrew language, man and woman. Because the book of Genesis explains, when you read the translation, you find the man and the woman, Adam and Eve, in different ways. But everything is synthesized. In Hebrew, man, the male, is said shin. And how do you write the word shin, which means male, man, in Hebrew, in Kabbalah? Simple. You take the yod of that and put it in the middle of aleph and shin. And you pronounce it shin. But written it means male. But this yod of the holy name means phallus. And that's why the man is represented with that yod. But if you take the letter he from that and put it after shin, not in the middle, but after shin, and then you have aleph, Shin and He, which means Isha, which is woman in Hebrew. So if you see very clear there, 
the duality of that make the fire in two polarities. Mm -hmm. And that fire of that is in relation with your thought. If you know that clue of the fire in relation with yod he in the Hebrew letters, then you understand the meaning of all the book of Genesis. Because in the Hebrew language is hidden the wisdom. This is how the master delivered it. This is how the angel Metraton, who brought the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, delivered to humanity. This is how Moses wrote Genesis. So if you don't know Hebrew, if you don't know Kabbalah and alchemy, you just get lost in the book of Genesis. Because every single word is related with the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So, there's another aspect here that also we have to understand at this age. And this is how the soul or the division of sexes happened. Because in the second triangle of the tree of life, where I was telling you, is in relation with the two aspects of the soul. The masculine, which is Tiferet, and the feminine, which is Geburah. And as you remember, Geburah is in relation with Mars, with Samael. Samael, of course, rules Geburah, and that's why Geburah is in relation with the warrior, with the Valkyria, with the superior forces that has to descend into the physicality and to divide the forces. Samael is, of course, as you remember, that archangel that rules two zodiacal signs, Aries, which rules the head, and Scorpio, which rules the sexual energy, directly related with Yesod. And here is something that we have to understand in order not to fall into confusion. Remember that in the previous lectures we stated that Samael exists within each one of us. in the head and in the sex. We were said particles of that force which is in relation with the Geburah because the microcosmos is a reflection of the macrocosmo. So Samael is in potentiality within the physical body. And he can perform marvels if we work with it or with him. So we have to understand that and comprehend that we will read Kabbalah or Genesis. Because one thing is Samael there in the planet Mars as a, logo, as a logos, as a force, as an archangel. And another is the force that we have in a physical body. It's a gift, we will say, that this archangel plays in nature for us. But we can use this force of Samael or this Samaelian force in the positive way or in the negative way. Because remember that all the cosmic forces has two, have two polarities or two rays. That's why in the conjuration of the seven we always conjure the negative aspect or the, or, or the positive aspect. So Samael is positive and negative in nature. And also Anael, Michael, and all the forces. So, as we explain the forces of the fire are also related with Anael, the positive ray of Venus. How does the fire enter into the physical body? Because we said that we are the microcosmos or the macro. 
Anael is the prince of the astral light. The astral light is that energy that is suspended in the atmosphere. That is the astral light. We are surrounded, surrounded by the astral light, whose prince is Anael. But how, how we extract that energy that the sun, because the sun, which is Michael, Tifereth, places the solar light in the atmosphere every day. When we go to bed, to sleep, then the vital body, which is related with, related with Yesod, which is the superior aspect of the physical body, extracts the astral light from the atmosphere. And through the spleen, which is that organ that we have here in the left side of our body, that solar light enters into the physical body through the nervous system and through all the organs. The spleen, as we explained, is that organ related to the creation of the blood and with the creation, uh, the creation of the white cells in the blood in order to heal our body. But thanks to the spleen, the astral light enters into the physical body and work miracles in all the metabolism and all the, the, the evolution, development of our physical body, especially in the teenage because the forces of Venus start to influence through the spleen into the sexual organs to activate the development of the third layer of the testicles in the man in order to create the zo sperm and the ovums in the woman at that age of puberty. So then, something happened here. Unfortunately, as you know, <coughs> we come from uh, fornication and we have the inheritance of our parents, grandparents, or relatives from the past, forefathers, in our blood. That blood that we take and that delivers, produces, according to the influences of the protoplasmic bodies. Remember that. Because this is two aspects here. The physical body is taking also the influence of the protoplasmic bodies that we, we, that they, we bring from nature, which is in relation, of course, with the animal aspect, with what we call nefesh, with what the Bible calls nefesh haya, living creatures within the body, forces. Of course, because of fornication, we created different psychological aggregates in the liver, or we were said in the protoplasmic bodies, that were called psychological aggregates, aggregates to the psyche, to the soul, which enter or affect the blood through the liver. The liver is that organ related with Mars. It's also influenced by Mars and is in the right side of the body. In other words, the liver is influenced by Samael because through the blood is how the forces of Samael enter into the body in order to influence the development of Geburah. Geburah is the superior forces there of Mars. But when they enter into the body, they do it through the liver. Because this is how the archangels work. And through the liver is how Samael enters into the blood. And at that age, starts the complete development of the sexual organ or the potency, we will say, of the sexual force, either in the male or the, or, or, or the woman. 
This is how that fire that descends from above enters into the body. Unfortunately, as you know, the forces of Samael that come from the liver are mixed with an animal past. Not only as anim irrational animals, but as an intellectual animal. Because we use that force of Samael, which is in relation with the serpent that the book of Genesis talk about, enters into the body. And uh, both forces, the liver and the spleen, in combination, create the sexuality or develop the sexuality in the teenage organism. Of course, as you remember, the spleen is related with hod, which many Kabbalists mistakenly confuse hod, or that is, is ruled by Mercury, but they are wrong. Hod is ruled by the moon. Any Gnostic Kabbalists know that Hod is ruled by the moon, and that's why the astral forces from Anael, which are in the atmosphere, come from the sun through Venus. If you remember, you witness every sunrise, Venus appears. And then after that, the sun. And when the sun sets, Venus appears after the sunset. The first star. Because Venus is the intermediator of the astral light or the solar force that is placed in the moon. I mean, in, in, the, in the atmosphere. But Hor is ruled by the moon as well. And that's why many Kabbalists uh, are mistakenly here, because they on, don't, on, do not understand the transformation of the energy in relation with the cosmos. The atmosphere here in the planet Earth that is charged with the astral light of the sun is controlled by the moon. And you know that. The moon controls all the forces of the Earth. The moon controls the atmosphere, the whole planet. And that's why when we talk about Hod, we talk about the moon. But we also talk about the astral light that comes through Venus into the earth. And of course, since we have protoplasmic bodies, as you know, all of that astral light is absorbed or mingled with the protoplasmic bodies because the liver in contribution with the spleen create the blood. And remember this, that in Hebrew, blood is dam. Dalet mem. And when you put that letter Aleph from above, which represents the three primary forces, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in that dam, in that blood, you form the, you form the word Adam, which is that precisely element which is made into the image of God, which circulates in the purified blood, in the purified blood. So then, the body absorbs the astral light in relation with the moon. And we find that the negative aspect of the moon is related with na Naama, says the Bible, or Nahema, as we say. Nahema. Nahema, of course, is that uh, aspect in each psyche of every human being, or intellectual animal, better said, that falls into fornication. It is uh, stated there in the Bible that Nahema or Nama was the sister of Tubal Cain. And Tubal Cain is nothing but the evolution of Cain in time, 
In other words, the intellect, the animal intellect, the subjective reasoning of Tuval Cain formed that element which is called Nahema. Nahema is uh, named as the evil beauty. And remember that beauty is tifereth, means that the consciousness that we have is mingled with, a, with the adultery, fornication, and with that, all of that uh, animal in inheritance that we bring from the past. That's why Master Jesus also says, Thou shalt not commit adultery to the young man. That is in relation with Nahema, which when enters into the body, or the forces of the astral life when entering into the body, make that beauty in the physical body, or that lure that entices both sexes. Remember that at that age, <coughs> all the beauty of Tifereth is expressed, or the beauty of the soul is expressed in the physical body as, as youth. Because all the hormones, or, we, or better said, because the sexual hormones, the sperm and the ovum, put in activation or an activity, all the metabolism of the physical body and the physical body transforms. And the man acquires his masculinity and the female the, his femininity. And that beauty that we see as men in the woman is precisely the outcome of that transformation of the astral light through their sexual organs, liver, and spleen as well in, in the men. That is the epoch of Romeo, Romeo and Juliet in which we feel that attraction, that force. And of course, unfortunately, we fall into that uh, enticement of evil beauty. It's called evil beauty because the ego takes over that of Nahema. It is very strange, uh, very rare, I mean, a person that at that age take over the sexual force and get, uh, is not involved or enticed with Nahema and do not identify with the physicality and go and, and see beyond that uh, attraction because in Nahema and Lilith, which in this case is in relation with the other aspect with Nessa, we said the liver. Because in it, it is, uh, it is a stated that it is a spirit of the air. The Master Samael stated, related with uh, Lilith, he says, the sun and the moon represent the positive and the negative poles of sound. The sun and the moon originate creation. The sun is positive and the moon is negative. The sun is a husband and the moon is a wife. The devil, Lilith, gets in between and harms the great work of the sun and the moon. As above, so below. Man is the sun and woman is the moon. The elite is Satan that seduces them both and leads them to fornication and to the abyss. The elite is a black moon, that is, it is the dark aspect of the white moon. Because remember that we always, when we see the moon, we see the white aspect, which is the, the face that we always see, but there is a, the other aspect of the moon which is dark, that we never see, which is in the other side, and that's Lilith, which is the origin of the I, of the psychological me. 
end of separate individuality. This is what Samael on the or states in the perfect uh, matrimony. How is that Lilith, the creation or, or the, 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 the influence, the creation of the I, that psychological need that we are working against? Of course, as we said, it's coming from the liver. In many Kabbalist books, uh, they state that uh, Samael, uh, in the beginning, have uh, or have a, a consort, has a consort, or a lover, in other words. And the name of that uh, female lover of Samael was Lilith. How do we understand this? When we study Kabbalah, we find that Lilith, according to Klippoth, is in relation with Bina. Lilith is an a eighth fallen sphere in Klippoth. What is the eighth, this eighth fallen sphere that always the Kabbalist talks about? The eighth sphere that you see is, your, uh, is a Hod. That's the eighth sphere. Fallen means the astral force utilized only for the animal aspect, only for the animality. Because according to Kabbalists, there is not a drop of human blood in Lilith. How do we understand this? According to Kabbalists, they state that before Eve uh, conceived with Adam, or before Adam begat Cain within Eve, Adam had Lilith as wife. Before Eve. How do we understand this? The Kabbalists, you, you find, you read that in the Sohar. That before Adam had wife, uh, I mean his wife, Eve as, as his wife, he was having Lilith. Of course, this is explainable when we understand the metabolism of the physical body in creation, in Genesis. Because Lilith is the impure blood or related with the impure bl blood from the liver. That impure blood from the liver is be began with Lilith and comes again and mingled with Cain. And, and, and with other personages that we read in, uh, in the book of Genesis, the impure blood. And it's explainable and understandable when we understand that the sexual force of Samael that enters to the liver mingle with the animal aspect that has nothing to do with the human aspect. Why? Because the blood of the liver is dam. Valet mem, dam. And uh, it becomes a dam with the oxygen that we breathe. And that is what we call the human blood. The human blood is a purified blood. But the poisonous blood from the liver that is not purified yet is in relation with the animal aspect, with Lilith. That's why. Kabbalah states that Samael, the sexual force that enters into the body, married Lilith, and that Adam was married to Lilith before, related, with, of course, with the blood. That Adam in itself represents, in this case, the brain, the development, the evolution of the race. So, when the God created or when the forces of the Holy Spirit created through Bina, the human being in the beginning, as you remember, there were hermaphrodites, male, female. But, of course, with time, when the division of sexes happened, and then it is precisely 
when Samael started to act. This is precisely how it is explained uh, in the book of Genesis. In Jehovah Elohim, the sexual power of the Holy Spirit took Adam, the Nun, the human prototype, the zoosperm and the ovum, from the blood, from Aleph and Shin and Mem, and put him into the womb or into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Of course, this is the ascension of the superior forces when they create the hermaphrodite men. But of course, this is done through the power of Samael, the division of sexes. As you remember, Mars is ruled in Geburah. And Geburah is a feminine aspect. Is that He that we call in the psyche, in the soul. That's why it's written there in Kabbalah that Samael is the one that interferes with Adam and Eve, where the two polarities are separated. Because that happened through the liver, through the blood through evolution. And of course, Lilith, the animal aspects, start to influence adolescences, or the ado uh, adolescents, the teenagers, because the physical body recapitulates, repeats the evolution within the womb of our mother. You have to understand that when we study the physical body, the development of the physical body, we are, in other words, studying the development and the evolution of the human race from the beginning in this planet, in this physical, chemical uh, part of, of evolution. Because the physical body represents the physical, chemical, matter in this three-dimensional world. But remember that life started and was related with other superior forces or superior dimensions. Many times we state that uh, previous to us there were other races. The protoplasmic race, the hyperborean race, the Lemurian race, and the Atlantean race. The human organism repeats completely all of those evolutions of previous races, root races, in the womb of our mother. When we study the gamete, the zoosperm within the womb of our mother, we discover that in the beginning, that uh, gamete is hermaphrodite. You don't know if it's going to be masculine. You don't know if it's going to be feminine. In the, how you call gene, 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 genealogy, the study of the genes, the sexual genes, or the way in which they are going to uh, discover if the fetus is going to be male or female, in those studies of uh, genesis, of medics, genetics, yeah, that's the word. In genetics, they do not know when the fetus is going to be a male or female. Because in the beginning, the fetus or that uh, gamete has the two possibilities of becoming male or female. In other words, the gamete is hermaphrodite, with two forces there. In other words, the gamete is having within, in the womb of our, of our mother, 
yod and he together. Remember that yod is the phallus and he is the uterus, the feminine sexual organ. How are these Hebrew letters represented in this day and age in uh, uh, genetics? They said, for instance, the yod is the letter Y, and he is the letter X, the feminine. This is how they start talking. Y is male, and he is female. If the fetus develops with two X, or with two Hs, in other words, is uh, is feminine. It's a woman. But if the fetus develops one X with one Y, and then it's masculine. Of course, all of that, as I said, is repeated. That development of Adam and Eve, the Y and the X, or He and, and Yod, within the womb of our mother. And little by little, is appearing the sexuality, whether masculine or feminine, in the fetus. But that development of that sexuality does not end when the fetus comes out of the womb. When the fetus comes out of the womb, when the baby starts growing as a male or female, the development or the evolution that happened in the past of the sexual organ is happening now outside of the womb. Because that development started according to evolution in the superior dimensions. And after, in time, it crystallized and started developing in the physical three-dimensional world. And this is something that scientists ignore. And that's why the development of the sexual organ starts first in the womb and continue its evolution in the outside world of the moon or outside of the womb. And that evolution starts from zero to puberty and beyond. That's why it is stated that uh, the sexual organ that starts its development, complete development, from the teenage epoch, which is from 14 to 21. That means that in order for a couple to start having sexual intercourse or to enter into matrimony, they have to have their sexual organs completely developed according to the forces of nature. Unfortunately, and this is precisely the big unfortunately here, we receive the influences of Lilith and Nahema at that age by inheritance from our parents, grandparents, and from nature. Because remember that before reaching the adulthood, before becoming a complete human physical development, which means Adam and Eve completely mature. Before that, the brain is influenced by the negative forces of sexuality in this way. Pay attention, because here is what you find all of this hidden in the book of Genesis. Adam and Eve, as you remember, and we explain in many lectures, represents Adam, the brain, and Eve, the sexuality, the genitalia. This is something very important because it has different symbolism. So the brain is completely mature, completely developed at the age of 21. And as well, the genitalia. Doesn't mean because a teenager begins to create those sperms in his testicles and a woman is menstruating, doesn't mean that they are mature. The sexual organ is developing that. But the sperm becomes very mature at 21, ready for multiplications 
or for transmutation, like why the woman? Many times we state it, but wo that women mature before 21 because a feminine organism develops faster. We said that the woman is ready for sex at 18. Performing any sexual activity before that is related with Nahema and Lilith. That's why it is stated in Kabbalah that Adam had two wives before having intercourse with Eve. While this Eve was in the head of God trying to create a, 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 a smart meat health for him, before Adam, which is the brain, of course, was in development. And the sexual forces were also in development. And unfortunately were infected by these two forces, which are called two feminine forces, Nahemai and Lilith. That's why Adam had two wives, Lilith and Nahema. Lilith, of course, influenced the brain in the very moment when we enter into puberty, when the sexual masculine hormones in the man starting to develop. And then he wants answers what to do with this sexual force that is developing in my testicles and that is influencing my mind, my heart. What to do? Unfortunately, he finds friends, etc., that invite him to satisfy that desire that is placed there in the sexual organ through Lilith. And he says, masturbate. Because Lilith, of course, entice the sexual sensation, the animal sexual sensation. But when you don't know how to handle it, of course, youngsters find the answer in masturbation. And they become then to be associated with Lilith. Lilith is that precisely element in the psyche from the beginning that was created because of the fall. Many great avatars start talking against it and trying to help humanity against Lilith. But people think that Lilith is outside in the world. No, Lilith is in the psyche of every single human being or intellectual animal. And if we allowed Lilith to enter through the blood and not to control it, and then we fall uh, in love with it. And we start creating those elements that are called incubi and subcubi. What are the incubi and subcubi? Elements that are formed with masturbation. That's why it says that Lilith is uh, sterile. She cannot uh, give birth in the physical world because she feeds herself with the vibrations of the spell demon through orgasm. The masculine aspect of this Lilith, many Kabbalists, especially Eliphaz Levi, or Eliphaz Levi, he says, is a Shmedai. A Shmedai is the, the masculine aspect of this Lilith that influences, of course, women. In this day and age, Lilith and, Lilith and Asmedai are influencing youngsters. All of them enjoy masturbation. And in this day and age, unfortunately, Lilith, that infects the mind of people, is creating through the air, which is Netza, that's why it says that Lilith is in relation with the air. It means the mind, it infects the mind, the psyche is creating devices and innumerable, as you know, apparatuses and ways, inventions, condoms, etc. 
in order to satisfy the animality of the youngsters. So they fall into the influence of Lilith, which little by little turns the human body, the psyche, into a degenerated individual that looks always for the animal sensation, because this is what is Lilith. Lilith, it is written in Kabbalah, has not a drop of human blood. Means that the purified uh, blood from, from, from the heart has nothing to do with Lilith, just the liver. And that's why you find that sensation of sexual desire in this area, the liver and the spleen and the sex, that urge you to go and satisfy the sexual sensation. That sexual sensation that is very strong and at the age of uh, adolescence, when you are a teenager. And of course, it continues. In this day and age, unfortunately, humanity is a slave of sexual sensation, the animal sexual sensation. And people think that they should uh, uh, enjoy life by satisfying Lilith and Ashmedai, by satisfying only sexual sensation. Nothing to do with love. They call it love, but it's, we will say, the negative aspect of love, Lilith. It's a demon that uh, in this day and age is very strong and it influences, as you know, homosexuality, lesbianism, and any type of uh, uh, violence against nature, against the sexual nature. And after that, of course, also exists the other aspect related with the beauty of Nahema, which is in relation with that enticement also that the young uh, feels towards that physicality, so that attraction, that magnetism, purely animal of Nahema, which is related with prostitution, adultery. And that's why Master Jesus says to the youngster here, you shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not steal. And a steal is in relation, to steal is in relation with the sephira netza, with the mind. Not to steal the forces of nature for the satisfaction of Lilith or Nahema. Thou shalt not bear foul witness, means you shall not create justifications in order to satisfy the animality of our physical body in order to fall into degeneration. And of course, after that, the Master says, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do this, and you will have presence in heaven, and come and follow me. To follow Jesus, the Christ, is to follow and to keep that chastity that we learn in baptism, penance, and Eucharist at that age. Because it's very difficult. It's precisely the age of re re rebel, rebelry. We become a rebel. Unfortunately, uh, in this day and age, you find all the answers for your sexuality with Lilith or Nahema. Lilith now is multiplying and growing overwhelmingly, overwhelmi overwhelmingly. Homosexuality and lesbianism it becomes normal. And they are justifying it, thinking that it's normal. But that is in relation with Lilith, where the impure blood, the venom blood that creates the liver. And Nahema, that infects also in relation with the spleen, in relation with adultery and fornication. So that's why you understand why 
at this age, you have to be confirmed in the past. That, of course, if you were receiving the mysteries from childhood. Unfortunately, in this day and age, people that come into the Gnostic knowledge, they have to be confirmed, of course, but they already are, they are not connected with the Gnostic church, with, a, with any church in the internal plane. There are many Catholics or Orthodox and many other religions that perform different rituals in order to be in union with their own particular religion. But before being a teenager, they are prostituting and squandering the sexual energy. So there is no union of the psyche with, uh, with the soul. And that is sad. Of course, they feel, they think that because they perform baptism and they perform all the sacraments before, they are already connected. But they ignore that the three amends, the forces of the sacraments work if you keep your chastity, if you keep working yourself. So there are people that think that they are going to go to heaven because they perform all the sacraments of their particular religion. Just when we said they perform means that they perform the ceremonies in the church. But there in their home, they were adul committing adultery, fornicating, masturbating themselves. And that, of course, is very common. Everybody does it. So therefore, there is no such union. But if we are, of course, very well guided, as this is stated here in the, in the Bible, when the youngster asks, he says, I have kept all of these commandments since my youth meaning that he understood what was baptism, what was penance, Eucharist, and now that he enters into the teenager, or the teenage, he's ready to go ahead. And the Master Jesus says, okay, but now you had not to commit adultery, not to murder, because murdering is in relation with the liver as well. The forces of the liver are controlled, as I said, by Mars, by Samael. If you don't know how to control it, you murder your own soul. Remember that huh? Cain and Abel. Cain is the outcome of that blood. Because when Adam and Eve, or we would say ate of the fruit, fornicated, they fell into the influence of the serpent or the evilness of the serpent which is related with Lilith and Nahema and that's why uh, it is stated that after the fall when Adam knew his wife he created Cain and Cain killed Abel which is the soul of course that happens and is repeated in the, in the childhood to adolescence. Because as we explain in other lectures, from zero to seven, when you reach adulthood, or in other ways, when you reach uh, adolescence, Abel, your soul, is already killed. Because Cain, your intellect, is very well developed. And then Adam, the brain, within which is hidden Cain, the fallen Adam, he doesn't want, he doesn't want to cooperate with, uh, with, with the Lord. When you reach 13, the age of 13, if, is that, that's precisely the, the most difficult age, the teenagers. This is called 13, because after 12 comes 13, 14, 15, 16. In all of those teenage uh, years, you're a rebel. Your brain doesn't want to cooperate with Eve. Adam doesn't want to engender anything with Eve in a positive way. So the brain, Adam, prefers to go with Lilith or with Nahema. And this is uh, it's very common in this uh, day and age 
if you talk with any youngster, he is married with Lilith, and if he's a woman, he's married with Ashmedai in the liver. Animal aspect, that's it. And they talk about how to satisfy the sexual desire in different ways. Jokes about, etc. They don't know anything about the positive aspect. Whether they are Catholics, Orthodox, or Jewish, they don't know. Because if they knew it, they wouldn't be masturbating themselves, satisfying and fortifying within themselves Lilith, or committing adultery, or justifying themselves in different ways. So therefore, the brain ignores Hava, Eve, the sexual organs, the development of it, and goes with Lilith and Nahema. And uh, later on, if he keeps performing masturbation or adultery, whatever, the black air of Lilith enters the brain. Remember that we explained in all the lectures. When an individual commits fornication, Lilith, which is related with the black air of the moon, enters through the sexual organ and infects the brain, infects Adam. Then Adam becomes with trauma. A teenager whose Adam, whose brain is polluted through masturbation, has polluted air in his mind. And therefore, that cane, which is his mind, becomes to Baal Cain that develops a sister, which is Nahema or Nama, and with her pollutes himself more. And then ends going and killing people or hanging themselves, committing suicide, because they have no answer in life. They don't know. Depression. Because they are disconnected with God. Some of them might believe in God. Because there are many teenagers that are very serious. They have a lot of faith in God. They believe in God. But meanwhile, they reject God with their own sexual actions. So God is not there with them. And that's why they are weak. And they find answer in suicide and many other uh, Ways, killing, which you say you shall not murder. Because when you receive uh, uh, the knowledge, you understand, you, you understand what is life in your sex. You respect life. But when you don't respect your own life of your, in your sex, how are you going to respect the life of others? You go and kill in the name of religion. That's a fanatic. Fanaticism exists related with Lilith and Nahema. Where they justify adultery, fornication, homosexuality, and they even uh, uh, celebrate that. But physically, psychologically, they are disconnected. They can believe whatever they want. Because Lilith is a type of psychology that put in your brain a lot of justification. Justify uh, herself as Ashmedai or Lilith with science, with evolution, with uh, saying that this is love that this is natural. It is unnatural because I repeat, there is not a drop of human or human blood in the leaf. In Nahema, yes. There is a leaf. That's why it is stated that there is a hope for Nahema that's from the leaf. But remember, those two forces are inside the psyche. Everybody carries it. But when Lilith take over, to take over you, it's very difficult to transform yourself, unless you have a very powerful strength. It's not that we say that you cannot, because it depends on your will. Not my will, not the will of the Gnostic Church, or the will of somebody else, it's your will. And Lilith is very strong when it takes over. Lilith in, in an homosexual, for instance, is Lilith there, very powerful and a lesbian as well, or those that enjoy masturbation. So you have to do a super effort in order to control it and to avoid it. There are people, of course, that uh, have good manners, good customs, and they don't fall into this. So they 
uh, marry, and unfortunately they fornicate or commit adultery or uh, visit prostitution. They still have more opportunity to uh, transform themselves because they are not under the influence of Lilith, but only in Nahema. So there is more opportunity for those that are in Nahema to change than those that are under the influence of Lilith. But when you enter into this work, first, you have to annihilate Nahema. And later on, Lilith, which is in the dark aspect of everybody. Right. That's why we said uh, sometimes says don't point at this uh, person because he's an homosexual or lesbian that he cannot change. No, we are not pointing at them because we have those elements too, but are not flourishing. They are not in the surface. When those, when you allow them to go on the surface and justify them, because when you hear, you see, for instance, TV, and it says, "Oh, I was under the closet, but now I proclaim myself. I am a homosexual," and they applaud him or applaud her. What is that? To applaud that you are a degenerate? That, that that's bad. You have to overcome it. Mm -hmm. Because if you are on the influence of Lilith, and you don't change your mind, and you justify that, well, you are justifying your own degeneration, your own impure blood, and you forget about Aleph, the three primary forces of the air that can help you. So there is always hope because all the doors are closed to the unworthy except the door of repentance. But it has to, be, uh, have to show, that repentance has to be shown sexually. Remember, because that's the foundation of the church. The foundation is the assault. If you want to show that you really repent, repent it, show it with your sexuality. Do effort to change, little by little. Then you are confirmed, and you receive the sacrament of confirmation. That is, repeat, related with initiation. So when you enter into the ini in initiative sacrament, it's because you already know the seriousness of the sexual energy with your psyche, with your brain with yourself, with your physical body. It's, it's not a, a, a matter of believing in something. This is something of, it's a practical work that starts with the physicality and with your psyche. But if you ignore, if you go to the school, university, to college, and you find fornicator teachers, or homosexual teachers, or lesbian teachers that says, oh, it's okay if you masturbate. There is nothing wrong with homosexuality, with lesbianism. Everything is okay. And then, of course, you justify your own degeneration and go into the abyss. We need to learn about sexuality in order to be confirmed, really, on this path, in this... Uh, That's why it is written, this is how uh, you have to understand how the Ish and the Isha transform themselves and become uh, or a, a, a transformation, of course, a, 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 a occurs in them when they take over and they take charge and take care of the sexual force that they produce at this age. If you take over and control your sexuality, your sexual energy at this age, teenager, at your teenage or adolescence, is the best thing that you can do. But when you enter into adulthood, you continue your path easily. But that's why in this moment, when we are teaching this doctrine, many adolescents, adolescents, many teenagers enter, and unfortunately, they are accustomed to masturbation and to other uh, violences against sex or adultery. 
and is very difficult, but not impossible. With patience, you will possess your soul. This is what the Lord says. But remember, uh, the teenage is when we have to study our own sexuality and beyond. Or to teach, because this is precisely the responsibility of the godparents. If those godparents knew about this and all the mysteries of the Bible, they will teach the teenager when they reach that age and come and says, come, I will teach you about sex. But don't think that I'm going to talk about that garbage that you learn in school where they said uh, and they give you uh, that you have to, to have safe sex and they start giving you condoms. No, that's stupidity. I want to teach you about the sexuality in relation with God and with your testicles or ovaries and your psyche in order for you to know and if after that that I'm teaching you, you prefer to go with Lilith or Nahema, well, it's your freedom. You can do it because I cannot stop you your own will. But if you want to enter into the mysteries and do not go into the abyss, I can help you and then keep ahead in your path of religare, religion, union, yug with God. Do you have questions? The question is, there are levels of confirmation? Of course. In every uh, initiation on the path of the self-realization, you are confirmed. And every time, remember the penances. Every time you are confirmed into another initiation. In this physical world, of course, in the Gnostic Church, we give an initiation, special confirmation, for those that, whether they are teenagers, or whether they are not, or they are, I mean, adults or older, in order to receive help from the Gnostic Church, because that is the confirmation. It's a very special ceremony of initiation, hmm? physically speaking, when the bishop, who has the responsibility, uh, is connected with the Gnostic Church in the internal world, will give that for, that union, to the neophyte, and is initiated. From that moment, the initiate starts helping humanity because is, his soul is connected with the Gnostic Church. Of course, in that initiation or confirmation, uh, we unite the elements, the four elements that we explained in the beginning of this lecture, with the soul, with the forces of Christ, in order to keep ahead in the work. You can break and cut that union that the bishop does in the Gnostic Church if you misbehave. Because the only thing that the bishop does in the confirmation is to unite that. Uh, he does it there, of course, with a teenager. If it's coming from childhood with a Gnostic knowledge. That's why in the superior chambers of the Gnostic Church, children are allowed to enter before the age of 13. When they reach the age of 13, and then the priest or the bishop comes and says, I'm sorry, you cannot keep entering into this church anymore until you are confirmed, until you are initiated. You want to keep ahead in the initiation, you want to keep uh, take care, taking care of the sexual energy, and then you can, can keep coming. But if you are not doing, going to do it, sorry. But we are, you are not allowed. You can come to the lectures, but not into the sacred chamber. That is, of course, when, I repeat, when a youngster enters into puberty. Our, oh, question? Something that what? The question is, is something that the student must do, can be do, can be done, 
when the student is taken uh, with, uh, with love, is taking care of the student very strongly. Well, of course, the whole doctrine of hypnosis alone goes to that. Meditation, studies, prayers, conjurations, a lot of tools. Remember that when the people start listening to our lectures or going to the website or reading our books, they think that the ones we who teach and who are in charge of this, or we are already in heaven, and we don't have penances, we don't have ordeals, we don't have tests with our lust. So therefore we are okay. We are just resting and, and uh, very comfortable in our beds. No. Lilith and Ahema are related with the 49 levels of the mind. 49. Each body has seven. Seven by seven is 49. The whole work is done through the first and the second mountain. Do not think that uh, we are not tested. We have the tools, of course. The tests are more subtle and more subtle and stronger or stronger. In the beginning, of course, it's very difficult because you come from the world of Lilith or Nahema and you want to enter into the Gnostic Church. Well, and then you start receiving and, and the good advice that we can give is study the doctrine. Study the books of Master Samael. Do not fall into the stupidity of believing that only five books are enough. The doctrine is given in all the books for you to study in order not to fall into mistakes. In order not to fall into uh, foolishness. And of course, meditate a lot. Because through meditation is how you discover your mistakes and comprehend your own defects related with Nahema or Lilith, which are visible to your psyche. Pranayamas, of course. In the moment when the lust is affecting the person, they are father. I remember when I talked with the Master Samael, I related with that. And he says, do not ever forget your inner being your aleph that comes to your breathing into your blood. When Lilith and Nahema through the impure blood is tempting you, your mind. And then you have to bring the superior forces. Because Lilith comes from below, you see. The liver and the spleen, the impure blood, and goes to your, to your heart every time. And your heart purifies it. But if you allow the impure blood to infect your mind, your atom, your brain, and of course, you feel a lot of stress, a lot of temptation, what do you have to do? Remember your God. And the Master Samael uh, told him, pray the Pater Noster very fast and strongly concentrating your God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. They will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily breath. Bread. Well, the la you see, uh, here I'm being correct. It says, it's not the daily bread, uh, the daily breath, but the daily bread. But really, yeah, it's, r it's right. It's the la daily bread. But let me tell you, that daily bread comes from your breath. It's a left. Uh, and of course that helps you completely right you pronounce and concentrate on your God and of course do, e do the effort to uh, fight against Lilith and Nahema which are within because unfortunately that's really unfortunately regrettably those forces are inside and outside hmm? So we have to bring God within. That's why we advise, go to the forest, go, uh, go to, to, to the country, field, and not to receive the forces of nature. Because here in the cities, there's a lot of Lilith and Nahema everywhere that influence your only Lilith and Nahema. Your question?
Well, he says, the question is, the moon is a dead planet. How come the moon interferes and controls the atmosphere of the Earth? Well, this is something uh, scientifically uh, proved that the moon, at the dead planet, is influencing the dead. Of course, as the book uh, uh, of the Bible talks about, the dead are those souls that are related with Lilith and Ahema. Remember, Klipoth, the abyss, is ruled by two spheres, Lilith and Ahema, which is the circle of Samsara, the will of Samsara, the will of the dead. I, exactly. And that is the karmic inheritance of the dead world, which is the moon, comes from the past. And that black moon is Lilith that influences the astral light that enters into the body. And that dead that we're talking here are the protoplasmic bodies that are influenced by the moon because they are lunar bodies. So this is, uh, this is why uh, people turn lunatic when it's full moon because the protoplasmic body receives a lot of strength. And through them, the physical body, the blood, and people turn lunatic, serving Lilith and Nahema. Yeah, G Gabriel, yeah, the moon. Uh, yeah, as you said, uh, the moon, of course, uh, 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 has uh, an angel that is called Gabriel, which is in relation with the positive forces of Jehovah, that were in relation with Gnosis, with Da'at. This is precisely what we do. When we enter into the Gnostic knowledge, we work under the influence of Jehovah, which is the positive ray of the moon, and Gabriel, and the astral light of Anael. Right. We, we start polarizing the astral light of Anael, the angel of love, through Jehovah, the Holy Spirit. And that is in relation with God. Well, the mental plane is in relation with uh, the fifth dimension, which is Netzah. And that, unfortunately, is where Lilith has its a lot of power, because Lilith is a demon in the mind. This is what we call incubi, incubi and subcubi that we formed in the childhood with masturbation, and that uh, all those elements that we bring from past lives, you see, psychological irony. That's in a sign, the mind. That's why we said that the den of the psychological aggregate of defects and errors is in the mind. And unfortunately, we allowed our Lilith, our mind, to take control of, our, uh, of ourselves, and then we start doing stupidities. So the, the, the whole work is against Lilith and Ahema. That's why in Kabbalah it says, if you want to protect yourself against Lilith and Ahema, pray to Shaddai, Certain Kabbalists, they put at the entrance of the, of, of, the, of the house the word of God related with Yesod. You see, in the world of Atiluth, the world of Yesod, the word of God is Shaddai el Hai. So they just write Shaddai, the holy name of God, in order to reject the list. And that's why we, in the conjuration of the seven, uh, we say the following conjuration. By the divine and human name of Shaddai. You see? Divine and human. Because we understand that the divine descends into the sex and becomes human. The human blood. That's Shaddai in relation with the Asod. By the divine and human name of Shaddai, and in the name of the angel Anael, which is the positive ray of the moon, the astral light, by the powers of Adam and Eve who are Jahava. You see, when we said by the powers of Adam and Eve who are Jahava, are the superior forces, Abba and Aima, who are Jahava. Jah is the father, Hava is the mother. Adam and Eve who are Jahava, in order to reject. Be gone, Lilith, let us rest in peace, Nahema. So when we do that conjuration, we have to understand what we're doing. You know, we are rejecting Lilith and Nahema by the powers of Anael, Adam and Eve, who are Jehovah, 
and by Shaddai, which is in relation completely with the sexual force. Is that related with the Passover and the uh, blood uh, uh, in the door and the Eucharist is the question? Yes, of course. The blood of Christ that descends from above goes into the sex and if we transmute the sexual energy, that's the blood of the Lamb that protects us from the angel of destruction. That's the blood of God. And if we take the Eucharist, in the way that we teach here, of course, also that blood protects you against Lilith and Nahema. Now you understand why we need the Eucharist. Because without the help of Aleph and Shin, which is Christ, how are we going to fight against our own powerful, negative, bestial forces that we have in this area of the abdomen, a little bit above Yesod, which is the sex, Lilith and Nahema. This is why we're here. You want to find your little and in your body? It's here, in, in your abdomen, above the sex. It influences, unfortunately, the uterus. That's why many women that are pregnant have to pray a lot in order to reject the negative blood from the elite and to influence the child, the children. It's a lot of cowards are related with that. Of course, those are the forces of Samael which are infected because of our transgression. Remember that. It's not from my own fault. It's you that infected and polluted the forces of Samael in your sex when you fornicate, when you masturbate, when you commit adultery. Because Samael can give you freedom, potency, in order to unite your soul with God. But if you pollute your sex, then you are polluting the forces, the gift that that archangel gives you in your body. And to make of yourself a demon. That's why when you pronounce Samael Sabaoth, you reject Andramelech, which is precisely that Hanas Mus that is connected with Klipoth, which is you, in other words. Another question? No conjuration can take out your incubi and your succubi unless you transmute your sexual energy. Of course, if you chant Belilin, that can help you in order to reject the influences that goes to the brain from Lilith or Ennahema from your lower abdomen. Because very often, the mind is infected by Lilith and Ennahema, those infra elements that we have related with sex. And the mind is always listening to stupidities that unfortunately we created and that we put there because of our ignorance. Then if we conjure and we said belly lean, belly lean, etc., of course, we are conjuring our own selves and even the outside world by not getting influenced or attached or identified with those elements but it doesn't mean that they are going to be disintegrated. If you want to disintegrate them, sit down and meditate, comprehend that thought, that polluted thought that you had, or that polluted action that you had, comprehend it, and ask for annihilation to your Divine Mother after comprehension. Do not commit the mistake of thinking that the Divine Mother is going to annihilate your defects, incubi or succubi, just by walking and says, death in motion, no. That emotion doesn't go like that. I mean, death doesn't happen like that. You have to comprehend. The, the Divine Mother is very exacting. It needs comprehension because comprehension is consciousness. When you take the consciousness out of the ego, it's because you comprehend it. And then you can ask for annihilation. But just there mechanically, just because you think that you, the Divine Mother acts mechanically, no. That's one. But conjurations help. Invocation help to reject the influence in the, in the very moment, but doesn't annihilate. Doesn't annihilate if there is no comprehension. What is the relationship with the 17? I don't understand the question. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, 17, 
Oh, what is the relation of the seven years of the teen? Right? It's only in English. Thirteen. Well, but let me tell you one thing. In Kabbalah, it is written something. It says that when Adam was 130 years old, but you take that zero out of 130, you hide the number 13, which is hidden there about the teenage when is reaching that level. It says, from 0 to 13, Adam, the brain, kept separate from the activity of Eve, his genitalia, and do not beget, because there are not so sperms or ovens uh, uh, at that age, from 0 to 13. But from 13, the animal mind came, killed Abel, the human soul. And Adam, the brain, lost his inner psychic relation with Eve, his sexual potency. And he gets and get, get involved with Lilith and Nahema at the age of 13. It says there in Kabbalah. But when he was 13, or 130 years, in other words, but he's 13, uh, the brain, Adam, refuses to transmute. He's a rebel. He says, why am I going to keep this when different justifications. And then he's going with Lit and Nahema. So when, we, when, when he reached 21 year old, Adam, the brain, is already polluted with Lit and Nahema. And now he wants to walk with Eve. And of course, there is always the door of repentance. It's okay. Here's the mysteries. Work with your wife, your Eve, your sexual genitalia in the, in the right way. And then he has to fight against Lilit and Nahema because he was in love and he was performing sex with them before that. Of course, I uh, was planning to read more uh, in relation with the Bible, but at the end, uh, uh, everything came like that. This way, I have a lot of things there. It was good that I didn't read it because uh, it's a little bit complicated related with the Hebrew letters. If you don't know the Hebrew letter, you don't understand what I'm talking about. But at least I gave you the, the, the main things in relation with the fire. Ish, Ish and Isha, fire, male, female, and the letter Yod and He related with the two polarities, which are in relation with the whole thing. Because in the Bible, sometimes you find Adam, and when he's referring to Adam, it's in relation with the blood or with the brain. And when he says the man, it's not Adam, it's Ish which is in relation with the masculine aspect of the fire. So it is good if you have the book of Genesis written in Hebrew for you, and in order to find when it's written Adam, and then you say, oh, it's talking to my brain, or it's talking to my blood, purified by the oxygen. When you find Cain, oh, it's, in talk, it's a talking related to my blood. The tempting serpent, oh, is my poisonous blood. That's the tempting serpent. You see, you defeat the serpent when you transform all your, your poisonous blood into purified blood. But the tempting serpent comes from the liver. And that's why it says that Samael was riding the tempting serpent. Yeah, because it's a sexual power. And tempting Eve, the sexual organ. Hmm? So uh, when you feel, when you read the serpent, remember, it is in relation with the blood, in relation with your sex whether the womb, whether the sexual organs of the testicles, that's the serpent going there. You feel tempted? It's your poisonous blood that are tempting you. Do pranayama. You see, pranayama is the practice of transmutation by breathing. To the breath, you eat the oxygen, Aleph, from the three primary forces. And then you put that oxygen through your breathing, through Idai and Pingala, in the root of your nose, into your testicles. And then with that oxygen, you go there, fight against the Lita and Nahema, and transmute the sexual force, and the Lita and Nahema are defeated. Temporarily. Because next morning, next day, the sexual force comes again. That's, that's the process. 
The body is always regenerating every day, the sexual potency. And unfortunately, all of us have polluted the sexual force with Lilith and Ahema. And we have to fight against that. And remember, in the breath is the secret. Because to the breath is how the breath of God enters into your body and purifies your soul. And through pranayama, the practice of respiration is how you transmute your sexual energy with the help of God. That is, of course, confirmation. Do you have any other question? The pranayama will be explained, uh, it's already explained in the website. Transmute the sexual, and uh, we can put it at the end of this lecture in order for uh, the transcription, when the transcri transcription comes, in order to help others. But there are the books there, and the book, of, uh, the yellow book, where you find how to transmute, how to do your prana yama, yama respiration, prana energy, the astral light. How to take care of your astral light through respiration. Now you understand why pranayama is indispensable for transmutation for teenagers. And during the sexual act, you understand why you have to breathe and to have rhythm when you have the sexual act in order to transmute. Because the breath of God that enters through the nostrils help to transmute the sexual energy in the sexual act. And the word of God, of course, helps to E-A-O. The three primary forces above through the throat, which is the heart, where Ava and Aima work doing the sexual act. <laughs> To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah.